Hello all. So I thought I'd make a quick video on how you go about testing if an engine coolant temperature sensor is good or bad without using a multimeter and just a real quick test to see if it's good or not. And I'm on a 2012 Toyota Corolla and the engine coolant temperature sensor is right down inside of here. Hopefully you can see that. It's got two wires going to it. And basically all an engine coolant temperature sensor is, is, is what's called a thermistor, which is a resistor whose resistance changes as the temperature goes up. And so you can't use a multimeter. You could test it. You could change the temperature of it and see if the resistance changes and things like this. But many vehicles nowadays, the computer is going to have a safety built into it that basically if it can't read that sensor, then it's going to kick on the fans. And so what could be happening if that sensor failed is that it's not sending the right information back to the computer. And when the engine gets hot, it's not telling the computer that the engine's hot. It's just telling it that the engine's running cool. So the computer never tells the fans to kick on and the engine overheats. But if you have the engine running and you unplug that sensor, many of these computers nowadays will have a safety built into the software that will automatically kick on that fan and that fan should start spinning. Another thing you could do with some of these sensors is the two wires going to the sensor. Sometimes there might be more, so you might need a schematic to know for sure what's going on. But usually what's going on is on one of those wires, you'll have five volts going to it. The voltage will be going through that thermistor, and then it'll change as it comes out the other side on the other wire. And the computer will be able to read this voltage and know what the temperature is of the engine. And so on some vehicles, what you could do is you, is you could take that connector off and you can use a jumper wire. You can jumper that five volts to the other side. That'll send a signal to the computer that the engine's overheating and it'll kick on those fans. Like I said, be sure to have a wiring diagram of your specific vehicle to know for sure what's going on with those wires before you do any jumpering. But that is fairly common, especially with vehicles from like the 90s and the 2000s, is that you jumper those two wires that'll signal that the engine's overheating to the computer and they'll kick on those fans. But like I said, most of these vehicles now have a safety built in that if they can't read that temperature sensor, that the fans will automatically kick on. I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so the engine's running, and I don't know if you can see that, but that fan is not spinning. It's at a standstill. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down here, and I'm just going to unplug this coolant temperature sensor. This will send off engine lights and everything else on in your vehicle if you do this, which you'll have to clear. Okay, so I unplugged it. You can see, and I don't know if you can hear it, but there they go. There goes that fan. So since that fan's spinning, the computer just went into safety mode. It can't read anything from this engine coolant temperature sensor, so it's automatically kicking on that fan. So basically, this coolant temperature sensor is bad. It's reporting the wrong information back to the computer. It's not telling the computer that it's overheating since it's bad, and so it just needs to be replaced. And like I said, it's a good idea to get a wiring diagram for your specific vehicle to know for sure what's going on with it and things like this. But that's basically it. It's just a real quick test to see if that engine coolant temperature has gone bad or if it's good. If you have any questions, ask me down below and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.